All right, Steve. You are, are we good to go? Can everybody hear me just fine? I'm getting nods, so my soul, I got the thumbs up from Missouri. Well, greetings and welcome to the inaugural Marketing Outlook webinar. Uh, I'll be coming to you live from North Dakota today, where it's a balmy 30, 40 degrees compared to what we had. Um, I believe this is being recorded and will be on the website for, uh, for anybody to go view at a later date if they'd like. I'd just like to throw that out right at the front. I thank you for your interest in joining this today. Uh, it's, it's vital we get our message out to our membership and, and all stakeholders is how we're working to help make uh, the Red Angus breed the best it can be. If we look back at, at our markets from the past where we were seeing, seeing extremely good times uh, to the recent present, I guess we'll call it today, um, we have uh, fallen back a little bit on our prices. Uh, however, I remain extremely optimistic as to where this breed is going. Uh, I think our future is extremely bright. Our marketing team has implemented multiple metrics to uh, help keep this breed moving forward and, uh, and they're working. Uh, I'm very, very excited to see those metrics working. We just came out of a board meeting in Oklahoma City where uh, Oh, I believe I was supposed to introduce myself too. I'm president of the Red Angus Association of America for anyone that doesn't know. We just came out of a board meeting in Oklahoma City where I was extremely excited to hear the board and staff talk about our future, uh, especially critical objective number one within our strategic plan. Uh, we had multiple conversations from a strategic level on how to move forward in the best way to implement and succeed with critical objective number one. I would encourage you, if you have not looked at the strategic plan, to please do so. Uh, it is an extremely aggressive plan that your board and staff are extremely committed to fulfilling. And critical objective number one, if you just look at it, it's 20% of the US beef cattle inventory will be Red Angus influenced by 2030. A pretty bold statement but it's a challenge we're willing to take and, and we're working our tails off to achieve it. You know, just a couple other things that are in there uh, in the key outcomes would be shift the industry standard on value assessment from a visual appraisal to a more objective metrics, I guess is probably the way I'll put it in my terms and eliminate the black red price differential. Uh, those are, Two of the outcomes that your board and your staff are working extremely hard on, and I don't want to go into detail on them because we have staff sitting here that's going to go over a lot of that for you today. But I wanted to leave you with this note that the future for Red Angus is extremely bright. We have market signals pointing in our direction, and we're working our tails off to make them come to fruition for all of you. With that, I think I'll probably stop right there and turn it over. I believe Tom is the next one to speak to you guys today. Okay, thank you, Steve. I'm Tom Brink, CEO of the Red Angus Association. And I'm gonna go ahead and introduce the rest of my crew here today. I've got Harold Burtz, who is our Director of Commercial Marketing with us. He'll go after me. We're gonna tag team this presentation. And also Chessie Mitchell. Chessie is the good looking one on the screen that you see. She is gonna talk about value added programs because she is our assistant director of value added programs. And so we're gonna talk this afternoon for a while about the competitive advantages of Red Angus cattle, steers and heifers. We're gonna talk some about the present situation and some of our challenges and some of the positives certainly that are associated with our competitive position in the marketplace currently. But we're also gonna talk about the future and we're gonna give you guys a little bit of a glimpse into our world, things that we're working on, things that we see as priorities for the breed relative to the strategic plan and maybe a little bit otherwise. And also we are going to provide you some good information, Jesse and, and Harold will, especially on some of our current programs that 
commercial customers, commercial bull users of Red Angus bulls can plug into. And so it's always good to be reminded of those programs because they really do work. They're inexpensive and they're easy to access. So go ahead and go to the next slide and I'll, I'll jump into kind of some of the big picture things that I'd like to share this afternoon before we bring Harold and Chessie on in just a little bit. So if you look at our position and kind of summarize where we are on the female side and then on the steer side, on the female side, on the heifer side, as everybody probably on this call is aware, we have had and continue to hold a very strong position in the marketplace with our females. Uh, we have been, we've, we've dubbed our position the most favored female. We have data to back that up from Superior. It goes back over 10 years. Uh, significant premiums really on all classes of young females, breads and opens in the commercial arena. And so uh, Harold will talk a little bit more about that in a, in a moment, but uh, we are in a very good position and remain very strong. We're working on one program in particular that will add even more value to the Red Angus female, but probably we don't need to spend a ton of time on that part of it because we know we have a very good and continued competitive position that is second to none. I think on the steer side is where we would have a few more questions. And so some things we wanna highlight and some things we wanna talk about here today, some things we're working on for the future is what we'll emphasize. I, I would summarize our position on the steers as saying that it is generally positive. We find when we talk to buyers, we talk to cattle feeders, they like Red Angus cattle. They like to feed Red Angus cattle. That is almost to a person in the feeding industry they see the, the hide color challenge, and yet they do like feeding red Angus cattle. They know we're a source of performance and a source of quality carcasses, and they like that. And I, I think we also can say we're on the move. As Steve alluded to, we are looking at doing some things that we believe over time will dramatically improve the position of our steers and red Angus cattle overall in the marketplace. I threw a little quote up here because I just talked to this gentleman uh, Colorado cattle feeder, you can, you can see if you can see the screen, what he said, and we were talking about a number of different things, and he just offered this. He said, the very best group of cattle we feed bar none for both performance and carcass is a group of red Angus, and I'm sure that's a reputation set that he's had familiarity with, but it's, it's great to get those kind of comments, and we really get those kind of comments a lot and cattle feeders see a lot relative to different breeds and different cattle that they feed. And generally speaking, they have a good affinity for Red Angus. Next slide, please. So what are we working on and what's ahead? Steve mentioned part of our strategic plan that is very, very important to us. It's also very challenging. That top little sentence is taken directly from our strategic plan. And Steve essentially quoted it. Let me, let me read through that again, because it's something we wanna very specifically talk about on this call. Our goal is to shift the industry standard of value assessment from visual to objective, visual to objective verifications, and thereby access industry leading premiums for Red Angus influenced cattle. Now we all understand that is, that is neither easy nor fast, because a lot of what goes on in our industry in the feeder cattle market and even in the fed cattle market is deeply entrenched. It's been there for a long time. And especially when we talk about hide color, it's, it's well established, it's traditional, you might say, it's pretty well embedded in the marketplace. However, we feel like science is on our side in what we wanna do. You can think about it this way, which really makes better sense and which is, the better science, the more advanced and really more objective way to do things, should we continue in our industry to base a lot of value expectation on things like height color, which are superficial, or would we be better off if we go to more objective verifications? We really verify breed, if that's what's important, like the Red Angus uh, FCCP tag, we verify genetics where that matters and that always matters and health and programs and so forth. And so we really feel like where our industry is in its evolution is very much in sync with what we wanna do and what we wanna accomplish. And that is help the industry move 
from a pretty superficial way of looking at things and trying to judge value when you're buying a group of feeder calves or, or yearlings or even fed cattle, really that hide color doesn't tell you much anymore. It, it probably really never did, but it probably tells you less today than it ever did. And so we are, we are going to do our very best. And we have a lot of, I think, good ideas in terms of where we can take this industry and help this industry go move to better science. Next slide, please. And one of the accomplishments that we've had really just in the last about 60 days, this was announced right around the 1st of December, is a change in the Red Angus, what we call the GLA or the live animal specification schedule with USDA. So we had had an older G schedule dated back to 2013. In fact, I think there was one before that back to the late 90s. But we had, it wasn't clear, honestly, about exactly the position that red Angus cattle can take in all these different Angus branded beef programs that are out there across the country. There's probably something like 70 of them. I, I haven't done a recent count, but as most on this call will be aware, there's a lot of branded beef programs in this industry that use the name Angus. And Angus is associated with quality, most consumers would recognize the name Angus and they would tend to associate it with quality. And of course, red Angus is Angus. I mean, that's, that's our history. That's genetically where we came from. The same Scottish population as black Angus is where the red Angus breed got started. And so what we asked USDA to do was to clarify our ability as red Angus to go into Angus branded beef programs. And after some discussion with them, they agreed. They agreed with us. They agreed that the G schedule could and should be rewritten to say that red Angus cattle are eligible for Angus branded beef programs. And that's what you see here. I pulled, looking at this little paragraph, this is the most relevant paragraph of our new G schedule. And you'll notice what it does. It talks about, it's paragraph 2.1. And what it talks about is the genetic or genotypic eligibility of red Angus going into Angus branded beef programs. This is very clear. And it's something we talked specifically with USDA about, and they were good to work with us and recognize that yes, red Angus is Angus and we should have eligibility into those programs. So the, the caveat is of course, that we now need to go and we'll be going to those programs individually, talking to them and showing them our new eligibility based on the G schedule and investing with them about getting them to include Red Angus in those Angus branded beef lines. And so that's high on our list. Uh, this year, 2022 and beyond, Harold and I will be working very hard on that, the rest of the marketing team as well. It's a top priority. And of course, you can tell that what we're doing here fits right in with our goal and our strategic plan and definitely is a way that we can help make Red Angus feeder cattle more valuable. So this is an exciting development. It's really great that USDA worked with us, I think, in a very forthright manner to, to put Red Angus parentage, and then make them eligible into Angus beef programs, as you see in this uh, schedule. So uh, good, good progress, and it lays the foundation for some real advances for us, we believe. Go ahead to the next slide. Uh, this, this slide is really just an illustration as much as anything of what we've been talking about and what our goal is in the strategic plan. We believe that the industry, as well as Red Angus, need to make this necessary transition. We look at where the industry has been over there on the left side of the screen. It's really just asking that superficial question when you look at a group of feeder cattle, what color are they? Or maybe fed cattle, what color are they? What does that really tell us? I, I was talking, had a great conversation with a Nebraska cattle feeder the other day. And he had mentioned about um, a group of cattle he had that were mostly black, there was a few reds. And the packer was wanting to balk a little bit at the reds and the cattle feeder said back to the packer, well, you go peel their hides off and then you tell me what color they are. And that's, that's exactly the point is it should be in our industry about real quality 
real carcass attributes and the like, real performance. It shouldn't be about something superficial like the color of the hide. And so we feel like this is a necessary transition. Again, it's important for us as Red Angus, but it is equally important for the industry because how successful will we be if we don't continue to really measure value and we just stay on the superficial side. So if we're, we really want to see and we want to help the industry move. And again, I think we've got a lot of good ideas and strategies to help the industry move toward ver the verified side over there on the right, meaning verified breed, genetics, health programs, et cetera. Those things are really where we need to be on hopefully every group of feeder cattle so the buyers know more and they can adjust their bids accordingly. And so the sellers can get paid for their value added activity. And that's gonna fit right into the rest of this conversation. So Chessie, go to my last slide, or I guess I have two, two left here. And so this is job one for us. If you wanna know what the Red Angus Association is, is got as a priority for 2022 and probably beyond, it's to gain access to as many of these Angus brand lines as possible now that we have the, the eligibility with our new G schedule and also to be furthering that transition to a more verified approach in the feeder cattle and calf market and helping the industry move and advance beyond hide color. And I would say we have been doing some work recently, been doing a little bit of kind of survey work in the industry and I think we're finding out see that a lot of people are on our side and they see the they see the future like we do they see the future as a more verified attribute future and not so much one focused on superficial kinds of elements so that's what we're going to be putting a lot of our energy into i'm very excited about that i think harold is and the team are as well we we feel like we know what to do we still have to do the work but it's, it's, uh, I think the, the road is open there and I think we'll make a lot of progress as we go down that road. My last slide here is just a very quick kind of a big picture and uh, kind of the slide. I, I encourage all the commercial producers that are on this call to think about this. If we, if we look at where our industry is and its evolution toward greater value, I think this slide it's what we call a two by two. It kind of captures that. So if we talk about feeder cattle attributes and verifications, on the left-hand axis here, we have an increasing number of unique attributes. So in other words, think about your cattle. If they have really good genetics, that's a, that's a unique attribute. If they have, a, they have four legs, that's not a unique attribute, is it? But if they have a gap verification or their, their FCCP tag, those are unique attributes, okay? Uh, and then so, so the more the better basically there, that's gonna make value go up as you go up the left-hand side of that axis. And then on the horizontal or lower axis, we're talking about an increasing number of verifications, okay? Often third-party verifications that validate and third-party verify those attributes. So as you go to the right, that also is gonna add value to your cattle. Now, let me roll through these quadrants. There's four quadrants in this two by two very quickly. No, quadrant number one, the lower left-hand side means very little or low levels of either one. So we have low at cat, cattle that have low attributes and they have low or maybe no verifications. Those are gonna be lower value cattle, aren't they? Just by default, those are gonna be lower value cattle. On the other hand, if you take number two, quadrant number two, that'd be the upper left-hand corner, these cattle would have a high level of attributes. They're good cattle. They've got some bells and whistles. They've got a good story attached to them, some very real and unique attributes, but they're not verified. They, they just don't carry the verifications. And so they're not going to probably get recognized in the marketplace and they'll have some greater value but this, this uh, group of cattle is gonna be missing out because they just don't have the verifications to carry into the marketplace on sale day and really get that recognized fully by the buyers. <clears throat> on the other hand, quadrant three over here is probably cattle that are misrepresented, Harold and Jesse. I mean, these are low attribute cattle, but somehow they're highly verified. That honestly doesn't make a, a lot of sense, but I guess, 
uh, somebody might be represent misrepresenting a group if that were the case and they're probably not going to have it's probably not going to last very long because those cattle are maybe misrepresented and by now you have figured out what we're talking about here quadrant four is where we encourage people to move to if at all possible and to the degree possible a high level of unique and valuable attributes on your cattle and then the verifications to go with that and support that, that's where the money is, it already is in our feeder cattle market. And we believe it's gonna be even more so in the future because it's not just enough for, for me to say, my cattle are good, my cattle have had all their shots. I mean, everybody says that, it really doesn't mean anything. And so I encourage all the commercial producers listening on this call and even the seed stock folks, uh, Red Angus bull producers that are talking to their customers. I mean, this is a good way to think in general about how to add value to your feeder calves. And so with that, I'm going to uh, uh, conclude my comments. I'll come back at the end. I'm gonna turn it over to Harold next. So Harold. How about now? Am I unmuted? Okay. Uh, well, thanks, Tom, and, and thank all you folks for taking a few minutes out of your, your busy schedules to join us here today. And uh, as Tom mentioned, I'm Harold Burtz. I'm the Director of Commercial Marketing, and uh, I hope you leave this call as excited about Red Angus as we all are. Uh, it's an exciting time of year. You guys are starting to think about making genetic decisions and plugging bulls into your herd and attending bull sales. And uh, the market is lending itself that this is an excellent time to do that. You know, we've never seen prime cattle bring as much as they're, they're spread on, on prime cattle. And I think that'll continue. And you have an opportunity to, to get out there and, and really add genetics that can, can push your herd in, a, in the direction you want it to go. So, um, and I had a, a, a member gave me a quote here this morning. He said that he felt like the market is moving to Red Angus cattle. And I tend to agree with him. And, and if that doesn't make you excited, nothing will. And I, I do feel like that. And, and certainly we've seen the market is moving in, in everyone's favor, especially for the cow calf. And, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing prices here after the first of the year that, that are just exceptional. The, the sales, the feeder calf sales that, that are going on right now, uh, it's, it's pretty exciting stuff. Um, the only downside to that and Chessie on the next slide you'll see a little bit of the reason why we got there and why this market's moving that way and and tends to be the case in the in the cow business somebody's got to suffer a little bit before the rest of us can gain and and the drought monitor that you see there has certainly pushed us to a declining cow herd we're in that contractual phase of the of the beef cycle but what you see there is that the drought's big and it's getting bigger and it was in some pretty critical areas and it really affected the cattle market in 2021. Uh, and it's gonna affect it even more in 2022. And that's no secret to you folks, you've lived through it and you know what I'm, what I'm talking about, but uh, it'll also provide us with an opportunity because there were a lot of cows went to town this fall, this summer and this fall. And I'm not sure we, we truly as an industry have our, our arms around exactly how many cows did go to town but it's a lot. And I think we'll see that reach. Uh, we'll know that in 2022 when those calves start selling and those feeder calf sales. But the, the drought is again, as we go to the next slide, you'll see that, that we saw this lower supply and, and that lower supply started to show itself. And I put this, this graph on here, it's the Oklahoma city steer price, which we kind of base a lot of stuff off of. And, and you can see that in 2021, that we were below average through the middle of the year. Uh, and I think that, that some of that was because a lot of calves that traditionally go to town later in the fall and even after the first of the year uh, from, from Montana and the Dakotas were, were going to town early just because of feed resources and drought conditions. And it changed the way we marketed cattle a little bit, but you can see there that even in Oklahoma then, uh, as we got towards the end of the year, we saw us go way above average and kind of get out of, of what was normal. Uh, and we saw, because I just don't think those calves were coming to town. So we've, we've definitely seen a, a, lower, uh, a lower supply of calves. And, and again, the sales that are going on right now after the first of the year continue to be, I mean, we're seeing $1,400 and $1,500 feeder calves and that's, that's exciting. Um, the next slide will show you a little bit about the other side of the equation. 
we continue to see increased demand, both export and domestic. And the export demand, we just finished out the highest November we've ever had uh, in terms of exports, and that will continue. Uh, one thing COVID gave us was, and we thought this might happen, was that it, it put people at home. They started cooking beef. They bought beef. They liked beef. It, they have it as their center protein in their plate, and, and just the demand aspect of this has not backed off one bit which leads us to the, you know, what they taught us in economics 101 on the next slide. Uh, if you have low supplies and high demand, you're gonna get higher prices. And this graph was one that, that I really, uh, really excites me a bunch in terms of the five area weekly weighted steer price. This is for finished cattle. Uh, and this is from the major feeding areas of the United States. And what you can see, again, it mirrored the feeder calf market in the first half of the year. It was just pretty stagnant and below average. But all of a sudden, we stayed uh, when we normally trend down uh, the, the, the second half of the year, we trended up. And the, the part that was most exciting was that there, right before Thanksgiving, we started trading $1.42 fat cattle, uh, you know, and then we had just a small lull at Christmas and we're right back up and we're trading those cattle right where we where we were. And, and that will continue to go higher just because, again, of those of those weaker supplies. So that's a little bit about maybe where we're at. And uh, now I'm going to switch to maybe a little bit more of where that fits us as Red Angus, how we can capture some of this advantage that we're seeing in the market. And again, you know, the market is moving to Red Angus cattle. I think that the point number one here is we definitely need to identify these cattle as Red Angus uh, through our FCCP program. You know, it, the, all the things that Tom talked about with those branded programs, this is your passport to that. This will give you the opportunity to participate in those programs as, as we see the industry move and, and we start to develop those programs. The, the feeder calf certification program is going to be your ticket into those. The next one is to utilize the value added program as management allows. And it basically goes back to let's move these cattle to quadrant four of, of Tom's diagram. Uh, you know, utilizing, uh, and we've seen value in this for several years, the, the non-hormone treated cattle, the, the verified natural, the gap cattle, you know, let's, uh, IMI has tons of programs, top dollar Angus, uh, all the, your third party verifiers have different programs that you could potentially add into your program to add value to your steer calves that you may not be doing now. Uh, in addition to the, the upsurge in market, if you add programs to those, uh, you're certainly going to see more profit. The, the third one there, I, I, I put vaccinate three times, and I think that's extremely important, and it, it may be second nature to a lot of you, but if it's not, it needs to be. As these feeders are paying higher prices for these cattle, they're certainly going to want to mitigate their risk, and one of the easy ways for them to do that is if you can prove those cattle are vaccinated, they're going to be much more comfortable paying those high prices for them. The next one is to potentially rethink your weeding and backgrounding as your management allows. And I know this is a, a slippery slope I'm walking, but if you're not currently weaning and you have the facilities or potentially could hire the help to do it, this might be the year to consider it. Uh, we're already seeing in the barns a six to ten dollar a hundred advantage for cattle that are weaned. Uh, you know, that will only get bigger uh, because these guys, again, as they spend more money, they want less risk. Uh, and so weaning is going to become coupled with a vaccination program could potentially see some real opportunities. Um, backgrounding, keeping these cattle as yearling. It, for the last probably four, maybe five years, yearling cattle have been really ringing the bell, whether you sell at the barn or in the video. Um, again, going to take a shift in management if you've never done it, but it may be the time to consider that. And if you do background or if you do sell yearling cattle or decide to sell yearling cattle, I think that's when those programs potentially really, really stack up as adding value. Uh, you know, a 48,000 pound load of, of cattle, it's going to cost you about $5 a hundred weight to, to, to settle into all those verifications, NHTC, Verified Natural and GAP. I think on yearling cattle especially, there is no doubt that that $5 will more than repay itself uh, as you put those cattle into the market. So definitely uh, some things to consider. Uh, certainly study it, become a marketer of your cattle, and, and don't just sell them. And 
that's where we can can really take an active role and we're trying to become much more uh, involved in that and we've got a couple of exciting developments that i'll share with you later that lend to that but we want to help you market your cattle we don't just want to see you enroll and we we love it when you when you use red angus bulls but we really like it when you're successful when you sell your cattle but we can't help you if we're not aware so if you can help us become aware of when your cattle sell where they're selling and what market venue you're selling in and what programs they're involved in. And just the most more information we can have, the more we can share with potential buyers and we can expand your network uh, of folks that are aware that your cattle are, are selling. As far as the, the heifer advantage, which is the next slide, as Tom mentioned at the very first of this, uh, Red Angus has always been a female breed and we continue to be and, and most of a lot of our programs are based around that female uh, and you know it, the drought created some real challenges but again as we get moisture in certain areas of the country it's going to provide huge opportunities and I don't think there's any doubt we've seen it year in and year out when the cattle cycle starts the expansion phase they go after red Angus females and this one's not going to be any different. They're going to replace that cow herd with with red females and that gives us a unique opportunity to be at the front of that and we've got a lot of programs built around that. You know, again, I put identifying as red Angus that's never a bad idea to let those buyers know uh, that my front end replacements are red Angus and, and that's what I need to put back and, and you know I as a buyer that's what I want to buy. Um, and we have other programs. Uh, we've got our, our premium red baldy program in conjunction with the Herefords, our American red with the Santa Gertrudis based on, on your preferences. You can certainly add value and get yourself out of the noise as we start to rebuild uh, of just being a, a red Angus heifer calf. You can become uh, or a, a red heifer in the barn or, or on the video. You can actually add some, some value with again, separating them and making them one step uh, above the, the average. The newest program that we recently released is our Red Choice, and we're extremely uh, excited about that. It's a heifer development program, a heifer management for bred heifers. Uh, there's quite a bit uh, of things that that we have on that you know it's vaccination it's a pelvic measurement it's an ovary palpation uh, there's some parameters around the bulls calving ease and then some preg check uh, options that that need to be followed but we really feel like again this system will not only make a better set of replacement bred heifers at your ranch but if you do choose to sell some of those females it's going to again elevate them to a different level of management and, and value uh, that these females have and, and just a lot of safety for me, the buyer. Uh, I know what they are. I, I have a lot more faith in, in how they were handled. I know they're top quality with, with the excellent management and I can put them into my program and, and be highly successful with them. So we've got a lot of information about that program on the website. It's on the front page under the red choice. I encourage you to take a look at that. It, it outlines all the, the management procedures and we even have a calendar on there of when those need to occur. Uh, but those females do need to be enrolled in one of our programs. So either uh, our FCCP program, Red Nav or the, the Premium Red Baldy, American Red. Uh, so encourage you to take a look at that. And then the red navigator, and this only feeds into to what we've already heard that that you know as as we try to transition from a, a color verification to a quality verification, uh, we this is a huge step in that. And this this test, this DNA test, has been around for for several years. But I don't think it's any secret that in the feeder cattle market that, that we're going to move to more genetic testing and, and we're going to want to know more information. And, and again, feeders are going to be paying a lot of money for these cattle. The more information we can share with them, the better. The Red Navigator is a tremendous opportunity to DNA test your commercial herd. It's designed for Red Angus females that are three quarter Red Angus or greater. And uh, what not only will it tell you a lot about what's under the hide of your own cows that you're keeping, but what a huge piece of information that you now have on their herd mates, their brothers that you're going to sell at the at the barn or at the on the video that you can now share with a buyer and help them be successful because you know the genetics that are in your in your cattle. Which that kind of leads us to then the 
the expansion of our commercial marketing team. Uh, we currently have five folks that are out traveling the country, uh, visiting ranches, attending bull sales, attending calf, uh, calf sales uh, throughout the fall and, and even now. Uh, in addition, we have two folks that are working in our value added programs department, but we felt there was a, a huge need that we needed to assist our customers. And that's kind of always been the, the Red Angus is uh, there. Our goal is to help our commercial customers market their cattle and be successful. And we felt like we were maybe not able to uh, track those cattle or not track them as much as just know as much about those and share that information with the feedlots. And so we're currently interviewing for a feedlot specialist and, and that person's going to work primarily with feedlots, uh, figuring out which ones the, that like to feed Red Angus, the ones that, that what their particular buys are, what programs they want those cattle in, what weights they like to buy, what time of year they like to buy, and then share that information with the commercial marketing team so that we can share and expand your cow calf. When you have your calves ready to sell, we can expand and hopefully get instead of, of one or two buyers on the seats, we, we want many. Uh, you know, maybe if we expanded that to four buyers, think what the competition uh, will create in terms of price, even in this, in this uptick market, we want you to to be able to fully maximize that. Later this summer, we're going to add a cow-calf specialist that's going to really uh, try to gather that information as we're out traveling, and this person will travel to uh, know more about your program in terms of, of when you wean and, and what programs you, you're involved in, when you sell, whether you sell on the video, whether you take them to a barn, whether you sell off your ranch, uh, how you market your cattle, and again, expand that network of people that know your cattle are selling so that we can create competition at the marketplace, uh, wherever that marketplace may be. So we really feel like this is a first of its kind and, and definitely a first of its kind for a breed association. Uh, we're really excited. We're fully staffed as a, as a commercial marketing team. And when we add these two positions, we really feel like this will take us to a completely uh, a different level in assisting you, uh, the commercial cow-calf person, market your, your feeder calves or finished cattle. And with that, uh, I've talked about FCCP a bunch, and I'm going to turn it over to the expert to, to give you the full details. Well, good afternoon, everyone. And I, uh, as many of y'all know, I'm Chessie Mitchell. I run our value-added programs um, with one of my very good friends, Jean Ann Jurd. Uh, so we are the ones that are talking to commercial customers um, and enrolling them in our value-added programs. The other side of my job is also trying to uh, work on our supply management on a database, on, on our adding value-added programs to our plethora, um, and trying to help at the end of the day add value to a commercial customer's uh, Red Angus cattle. So first and foremost, I just want to remind everyone of a few critical things. Uh, first and foremost, on what when Tom was talking about our live animal specification that was completed in December, uh, I want to make sure that everyone understands that under Genotype 2.1, that in order to qualify those animals into Angus programs, they need to be enrolled in SCCP. And in order to, in order to receive those premiums, we have to have you guys um, have your commercial customers give us a call. We have one of the easiest enrollments. Um, as many of you know, FCCP was started in the 1990s after a strategic plan uh, realized the benefit and the need uh, for this value added program. But we've always wanted to hold true to the fact that it was low cost and it was easy to enroll. So one phone call, um, we're extension number two here at the association. Give us a call, have your customers give us a call, and we would love to help them enroll in any of our plethora of programs. Additionally, it's low cost. We have absolutely no enrollment fees. Um, we have affordable tags. And as we all know, uh, getting tags this day and age is a fun process, but um, due to the resin shortage and COVID supply and, and all of the things that are happening in the world, tags are kind of hard to get a hold of. But thankfully, we actually have opened up our purchasing options to both Allflex and Z tags. Uh, Z tags is a data Mars company and we can officially order tags, EIDs um, from both of these options now. And 
We also want to remind our customers that we have back in 2020, we completed um, a, a contract with IMI Global that if a customer enrolls in Red Angus uh, FCCP or Allied Access and they purchase our EIDs, then they can receive a significant price discount on their IMI Global enrollment fees. So all you got to do, give me a call and give Jean Ann a call. We'll get you started in FCCP and Allied, or Allied Access. And then we'll get you over to the, the good folks at IMI Global if you're interested in NHT, NHTC, uh, NE3, uh, Beef Care, any of those programs, and make sure that uh, we get that price discount on your bill for IMI Global. Additionally, uh, with this day and age, I also um, I would regret if I didn't talk any about the importance of EIDs. We are strongly trying to to push the, the message that you need to be using electronic identification within your program. We totally understand that if it's not uh, management, it's not in the management protocol for your operation, we understand. But we just wanna make sure that everyone knows that there's value added programs throughout the country that only require EIDs now. One example being IMI Global. We also, in order to track cattle for traceability, uh, it's just more and more becoming an option um, and for electronic identification. There's uh, state vet programs where you can get significant discounts on EIDs. And we also have a 48 hour turnaround um, on EIDs as well here at the association. So those are just a couple uh, things that I wanted to, to hit on today about our value added programs. And please just remember, Jean Ann and I were just one phone call away and we can get started on the process to get you enrolled or to get your customer enrolled. And we're extension two here at the association and we're ready to go to work for you. With that, I wanna turn it back over to Tom and Tom can kind of talk about um, our commercial marketing team and here's a good slide of how to reach everyone. And that's what we'll end it on the slides. But I think Tom wants to, to wrap up our message here today. Thank you for that, Chessie and Harold and Steve. We very much appreciate you being on. I, I enjoy working with Steve as our president. If you want to know somebody that cares about this breed, it's Steve Keister. He really has his heart and soul in it and, and uh, is very, very committed, as does the team that you see in front of you. I, I find it interesting that uh, Kale and Nolan look like they might be related there, at least with the beards. but. This is an outstanding group. This is a great group of people. And if you don't know them or you don't know all of them, please call any of them and ask for advice. Ask just maybe to have a conversation about, maybe you have listened to what we're talking about here and you say, you know, this value added programs thing makes a lot of sense. I, I see the industry moving the way that, that they're saying. And so, but I need to figure out really how to fit different programs into what I'm doing in my herd, in my operation, please call any of the members of our marketing crew because they, they will do a great job just visiting with you, kind of fact finding with you, and then offering you a variety of solutions for you to pick from. It, it truly is the direction that the industry is going. Hey, we've covered a lot of ground on this call. We've talked about markets and that's a big deal. And I'm glad Harold brought that in with what's gonna happen over the next few years. It's for real. We're already starting to see it impact market prices as Harold laid out. That's a good thing. We've talked a lot about our many programs on the marketing side that we offer through the Red Angus Association. And again, we are very glad to talk to you about any of those. You know, and I, I was sitting here thinking, just listening to Harold and Chessie, one of the things that's very exciting as we go into the 2022 bull season is I really firmly believe that, that our breeders are offering the best set of bulls that they've ever had, genetically and phenotypically. I, I talk to breeders all the time and that's often what they say. They say, this is without me asking, this is the best set of bulls I've ever produced. And the reason they're saying that is because our genetic threshold just continues to improve. Breeders have done a great job. I think you'd be hard pressed the, if you look at the last 10 or 15 years, you'd be, it'd be very difficult, if not impossible, to find a breed that has done a better job of bringing improvement in multiple traits. The important traits on the maternal side, cabinets, growth, 
and carcass traits. I mean, I, I just am impressed when I look at our 10 year trend, 15 year trend in what's going on in this breed genetically. And we're also doing it phenotypically. Our marketing team, it will be literally all over the country over the next four months. They, they can help you find a bull. If you're looking for a specific herd bull and you don't know where to look, they can help you find the right bull for you. But I, I am uh, extremely excited for this sale season because I believe our breeders are stepping up like never before in offering the kind of genetics that will really truly benefit all segments of the beef industry. And so if we seem a little bit excited about what's going on at Red Angus, we are. And we think this is going to be a great year in 2022. We're excited for some of the things that we've got positioned on the marketing side with the new G schedule. We have a lot of work to do, but it's going to be fun work and we know the direction we need to go. And so thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. We appreciate everybody uh, just being part of this discussion. Thank you to Steve and to Chessie and, and Harold and also Katie, who helped us put the slides together and the entire marketing team. So this, this presentation, as mentioned, will be recorded and it is going to be on the website. So feel free to pass it along to anybody you feel like would benefit from hearing more about what's going on at Red Angus. Thank you very much. And we'll conclude for the afternoon. Take care.